The childhood friend with whom I had a marriage agreement swore she would marry no one but that delinquent with dyed yellow hair. At our engagement party, she caused a scene, demanding to break off the engagement, tearfully telling all the guests that true love is priceless. I granted her wish, agreed to break off the engagement, and chose to go abroad to take over the family business. She didn't know that only by being engaged to me could she continue to live as the cherished daughter of a wealthy family. Without the engagement, she would be nothing. Three years later, when I returned home to expand the family business, she barged into my office, pregnant, and clung to me, refusing to let go, crying. She begged me, Jonathan, I regret it. Can you take me away? Chapter 1. Is this Natalie Lynn? I looked at the pregnant, disheveled woman in front of me, barely recognizing her. Her face was haggard, her body bloated, her hair dry and yellow, and her skin rough. She should only be 25, yet she looked like a middle-aged woman in her 40s. Was this the same pampered? Charming princess of the Lynn family, how did she end up like this? Natalie had suddenly burst into my office, the security guards behind her unable to stop her. Upon seeing me, her face lit up with joy, she shouted at me, Jonathan, Jonathan, it's me, Natalie. She reached out to grab my hand, but I subtly stepped back, I asked, are you Natalie, what do you want from me? Jonathan, I knew you would come back, I've been waiting for you for so long, she spoke as she lunged toward me, I frowned and pushed her away, saying, if you have something to say, say it. If not, leave. Don't get so close to me. Natalie's eyes widened in disbelief as she said, Jonathan, how can you talk to me like this? You weren't like this before. I replied with a blank expression. That was before. Miss Lynn, you are now a married woman. Please be mindful of your behavior. But Natalie suddenly laughed. I get it. You're still jealous. Jonathan, you're still upset about me breaking off the engagement. Jonathan, did you come back this time because you missed me so much that you couldn't resist coming to find me? don't be shy, I'm giving you this chance, I was speechless, at this moment, I could feel the veins on my forehead throbbing, what nonsense was she talking about, it's been three years since we broke off the engagement, I came back this time to handle the family business, what does that have to do with her, suppressing my emotions, I coldly issued an eviction order, Miss Lynn, you must be mistaken, I have things to take care of, please leave at once, I didn't dare have the security forcefully remove her, given the size of her belly, she must be at least eight or nine months pregnant. If anything happened, would I even be able to continue with the new business venture I've started since returning? Unexpectedly, Natalie suddenly fell to her knees with a thud and began to wail, crying. She tightly clutched my pants. She shouted, Jonathan, I regret it. Can you take me away? My frown deepened to the point where it could kill a fly. These were the pants my girlfriend had just ironed for me this morning. Chapter 2. I can be considered Natalie's childhood friend. As our families had business connections that resulted in us being frequently paired together, both intentionally and unintentionally, in elementary school, middle school, and high school, we were always in the same class. She was the little princess of the Lin family, and I was the young master of the Lu family. Our classmates and friends always believed we were destined to be together. As a result, Natalie developed an inexplicable possessiveness over me. She never allowed other girls to get close to me, including, but not limited to, sitting next to me in class asking me questions, or giving me love letters, because of Natalie, my relationships with the opposite sex were almost non-existent from a young age, Natalie was like a proud peacock, always holding her head high wherever she went, since my elders had instructed me to take good care of her, I silently followed her wherever she went, all the girls envied her, having someone like me, with such a privileged background, silently protecting her, but if you ask me whether I liked her, at the beginning, I wouldn't say I liked her, growing up in a family like mine, business marriages were inevitable. So who cares who you marry? That's what I thought back then. Later, as we spent more time together and the costs increased, I did develop some feelings for her. I thought we were destined to be together for life, and our parents had already arranged our engagement early on. In college, Natalie and I finally separated as she didn't perform well enough in the entrance exams to get into my school. Until we graduated from college, the year we were preparing to get engaged, Natalie brought a thug home. Chapter 3. Mr. Lynn sat at the head of the table his face turning pale with anger. He questioned her. Natalie, say that again. I said I want to break off the engagement with Jonathan. Natalie said, gripping the thug's hand and stiffening her neck. Impossible. Mr. Lin slammed his hand on the table, shouting, what nonsense are you talking about? Then he pointed at the thug. What kind of riffraff are you bringing into this house? Get him out of here. He's not riffraff. He's my boyfriend. I want to be with him. I don't want to get engaged to Jonathan. The thug was greedily eyeing the Lin family mansion, his eyes almost popping out. He chuckled and said, Father-in-law, mother-in-law, Taylee and I are in love freely. Arranged marriages like yours are outdated and too futile. Right, baby, 
After saying that, he wrapped his arm around Natalie and kissed her on the lips. You're right, brother. Natalie squealed, leaning into the thug's arms. I shivered. In all the years I'd known Natalie, I had never heard her speak like that. Mrs. Lin, seeing the thug's yellow teeth, was on the verge of fainting, but she still tried to persuade. Natalie, stop this nonsense. Jonathan is still here. You know this is impossible. You and Jonathan are supposed to get engaged in three days. The invitations have already been sent out. If you break off the engagement now, where will that leave our families? I don't care. Natalie screamed petulantly. I don't want to be a sacrifice for your profits. I want to choose my own men. I couldn't hold back any longer and spoke up. Natalie, is this really your idea of a good man? I don't understand. In what way am I, Jonathan, inferior to him? I've never mistreated you since we were kids. What do you know? Natalie said smugly, clutching the thug's arm. She continued, you only have that filthy money without the Lou family. What would you be, Jonathan? Every gift you give me is just those flashy big brands with no originality. But Ryu is different. He's so good to me. He makes cucumber salad for me with his own hands, washes my feet, and uses his last penny to buy me candy. Chapter 4 No matter how good my temper usually is, I couldn't hold it in any longer at this point. Uncle Lin. I stood up, my face showing clear displeasure as I said, since Natalie doesn't want this, I'll go back and tell my parents that we should just cancel the engagement. We can't force her, after all. Oomph. At least you have some self-awareness. Upon hearing this, Natalie lifted her chin in a haughty manner. But Mr. Lin panicked and quickly stopped me, saying, Jonathan, Jonathan, Natalie is just too naive. She's been deceived. You should go home for now, and we'll teach her a lesson. The engagement will definitely go ahead as planned in three days. No, Uncle Lin, I can't go through with the engagement under these circumstances. It doesn't sit right with me. Seriously, who wouldn't be upset seeing their fiancé kissing a thug right in front of them? This was nothing less than being blatantly cheated on. The only reason I hadn't reacted more strongly was because I still cared about the relationship between our families. Anyone else might have resorted to violence by now. Jonathan. Mr. Lin stood up and quickly walked over to me, speaking in a low voice. Please, give your Uncle Lin some face. This time, it's the Lin family that has wronged you. I know you're a reasonable person. The South City Project. This time, the Lin family can let the Lu family have it directly. Whoa. He was really willing to pay the price. That project was conservatively estimated to earn tens of millions. And more importantly, the South City was currently a key area for government development. Gaining an early advantage there was not easy. Although the Liu family was much stronger than the Lin family, most of our assets were overseas. For domestic projects, we sometimes needed the Lin family to connect us with the right people, which was why our families were considering marriage in the first place. The Lin family was attracted to the Liu family's scale and assets. While the Liu family valued the Lin family's connections and domestic network, it was a mutually beneficial arrangement. Internally, I was thrilled. The Liu family had been eyeing the South City project for a while. But on the surface, I pretended to be conflicted. Uncle Lin, I still need to discuss this with my parents. After all, having such an incident before the engagement, if Natalie and I don't get along in the future, it will surely affect the relationship between our families. Of course, of course, Mr. Lin said awkwardly. Chapter 5 When I got home. I told my parents the whole story. It was so ridiculous that I couldn't help but laugh as I recounted it. Before my dad could say anything, my mom shouted, No, absolutely not. I don't agree. Do they really think a project is worth putting a green hat on my son? How delusional. Do they think the Lu family lacks money? We already have a good chance with the South City project. We don't need their handouts. As she spoke, my mom exploded like a firecracker. I've said from the beginning that I didn't like that Natalie but your dad kept saying I was just a picky mother-in-law. That girl was rude from the start, loud and ill-mannered, no grace at all. Honey, honey, my dad quickly tried to calm her down. Don't get upset, we should hear what Jonathan thinks. What if he actually likes Natalie? But my mom slapped him on the back and asked, what do you mean? Are you saying my son has bad taste? My dad covered his face, unable to find words to defend himself, watching them. Some of the anger in me began to dissipate. Dad, mom, I called out to them. Knocking on the table as I thought for a moment, then I said, I've spent the most time with Natalie, so I know her better than anyone. This marriage is definitely not going to happen, but this is also an opportunity for the Lu family. My parents' eyes widened as they listened to me, to be honest. I can't swallow this humiliation after how Natalie has treated me. I'm going to make the Lin family give up even more. My eyes turned cold. Since the daughter of the Lin family made her choice, she shouldn't blame me for being ruthless. This marriage may not happen but the one to call it off cannot be the Lu family. I then laid out my plan for them, instructing them to cooperate with me fully. Look, look at our son, and then look at yourself. My mom tugged at my dad's ear, scolding him. 
You're 40 years old and still not as capable as your 20-year-old son, my dad, though in pain, proudly said, that's right, he's my son, I must have passed on all my brains to him, I smiled helplessly, knowing they were arguing like this just to lighten my mood, after all, my dad had taken over the Lu family nearly 10 years ago and had led the family business to great success, how could he be considered incapable? Chapter 6, 3 days later, at the banquet hall of the Grand Sky Hotel, Uncle Lin, I greeted while extending my hand to shake Mr. Lin's. Looking at Natalie beside him, I asked, Are you sure Natalie is here of her own free will today? Hey, Mr. Lin let out an awkward laugh, while Natalie turned her face away, saying nothing. Does she dare not comply? A flash of ruthlessness crossed Mr. Lin's eyes as he said, This is about the only thing she's good for. Jonathan, two years ago, when you pleaded for this rebellious girl, Uncle Lin knew you were a man of loyalty and righteousness. From now on, Uncle Lin will treat you like my own son. Mr. Lin changed the subject, but I just smiled and remained silent. The banquet hall filled with more and more people, prominent figures from Yen City and representatives of various families. Many came up to toast me, and I smiled and raised my glass to everyone. Even my best friend, David, came over with a face full of schadenfreude to tease me. Men, I didn't expect you to be so young and already about to enter the grave of marriage. I shot him a look and said, stop talking nonsense, it's just an engagement. Still, that means you're off the market, he said as he clinked his glass with mine. From now on, you'll just have to watch while I enjoy life. I clinked his glass back and replied lightly, not necessarily. At that moment, the host took the stage, and after saying a bunch of congratulatory words, finally got to the main point, let's welcome the stars of today, Mr. Jonathan and Miss Natalie. I walked up to the stage with her, the host continued, today, Everyone here is gathered to witness the engagement ceremony of these two. You've all given your blessings. Do either of you have anything you'd like to say? Before I could take the microphone, Natalie suddenly grabbed it and said, I, Natalie, refuse to get engaged to Jonathan. Chapter 7 The room erupted into chaos, with the guests all whispering to one another, Natalie, what are you saying? My parents stood up from their seats, their faces pale with anger. Mr. Lin quickly turned around, bowing and apologizing. In-laws, in-laws. Natalie is just being impulsive. She was only joking. I'm not joking. Natalie screamed loudly, and I quickly stepped a few paces away from her. My parents forced me to come. I don't love Jonathan at all. I love brother Ryu. You people are all fools. You're only concerned with money, with profits. You'll never understand the pure love between brother Ryu and me. Wow. I applauded her in my mind. Her fighting spirit was impressive, insulting all the high-ranking people in Yen City in one fell swoop. Now. Even if the Lin family wanted to secure the South City project, there was no way they could. I thought the drama would end there, but to my surprise, Natalie, biting her lip and stomping her foot, dropped another bombshell. I'm already pregnant with brother Ryu's child. At that moment, the large screen behind us conveniently displayed a pregnancy test report with Natalie's name written clearly on it. I came here today to tell all you money-grubbing people that true love is priceless. Immediately, there was a loud thud as Mrs. Lin fainted on the spot. The scene turned into a frenzy. I turned to Natalie and said, Look, you've made your mom faint. Natalie was completely indifferent. She deserves it for forcing me to marry you. Just hope you won't regret this later. I said this with a meaningful tone. And while she wasn't paying attention, I took the microphone from her hand. Everyone, please remain calm. The ambulance is on its way. I apologize for the spectacle today. Jonathan sincerely asks for forgiveness from all our relatives and friends. Given the current situation, it's regrettable that the engagement between the Lu and Lin families can no longer proceed. Jonathan can only wish Miss Lin happiness in the future. The Lin family had already made themselves a laughingstock today. So naturally, it was up to us, the Lu family, to show some grace and dignity. Sure enough, after I calmly delivered those words, the way people looked at me changed. Even Mr. Lin gave me a look of gratitude. They probably thought that a young man like me, faced with a situation like this, would be so humiliated that I'd lose control. Perhaps even if I had started beating Natalie, some people might have understood, but what would be the result of that? We would both become jokes, or people might see me as a reckless youth. Enduring the humiliation would accomplish nothing. I smirked slightly. Now, let's see how the Lin family compensates me for my emotional distress. I hope they show some sincerity. Chapter 8. As expected, after the fallout, the Lin family ended up compensating the Lu family with five projects. Mr. Lin's face twitched with pain as he signed them over. I pretended not to notice. Natalie, on the other hand, was driven out of the Lin family. What she didn't know was that she should have been kicked out two years ago. It was only because of my long-standing relationship with her that I persuaded Mr. and Mrs. Lin to keep her, reminding them that she and I were still engaged. Two years ago, 
they discovered that Natalie was not their biological daughter. She had been switched at birth by Mr. Lin's secretary. Unlike in novels, bloodlines are of utmost importance to wealthy families. The Lin family had only one daughter, and even when we got engaged, there was an agreement that one of our future children would carry on the Lin family name, or else the Lin family line would end. So, when they found out that Natalie wasn't their biological daughter, they were ready to expel her without hesitation. Even though they hadn't yet found their real daughter, it was I who suggested that we keep the engagement. After all, the Lu and Lin family still needed to cooperate. That way, even if they found their real daughter later, she could stay with them, and they could bring in a son-in-law. The Lin family was wealthy enough that raising an extra daughter wouldn't be a burden. So Natalie had been kept in the dark, not knowing any of this, I bet if she had known, she wouldn't have dared to cause such a scene. Previously, she only acted out because she believed she was the sole heir of the Lin family, thinking that no matter what, Mr. and Mrs. Lin wouldn't abandon her. Damn, I met up with David for a drink, and the first thing he did when he saw me was swear. Johnny, it's a good thing you didn't get engaged to Natalie. She's completely lost it. You don't know. Yesterday the Lin family publicly announced that Natalie isn't their biological daughter. She went and rammed her car right into the Lin family's front gate, nearly giving Mr. and Mrs. Lin a heart attack. Chapter 9 I took a sip of my drink, a deep sense of irony filling my eyes. Natalie had truly been spoiled. The Lin family had raised her for so many years to avoid gossip and to ensure that she would be taken care of for the rest of her life. Now, she'd handed them the perfect excuse to sever ties with her publicly. However, I set aside thoughts of Natalie and focused on what was more pressing. David, stop calling me Johnny. I'll keep calling you that. I'll keep calling you that. David said with a mischievous grin. You've always been the golden child in my dad's eyes. The one I've been compared to all my life. Do you know how many beatings I've taken because of you? I'm just doing this to annoy you. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Call me that again, and I won't include you in my next investment. I said, my expression unchanging. No, bro, I'm sorry. David immediately wailed. I have no idea what my dad was thinking. Making me meet a 30 million investment target every year, and I can only make a profit. No losses. He knows I'm not cut out for this. Isn't having my brother enough? I glanced at him, watching him play the fool in front of me. There are hardly any true heirs of wealthy families who are genuinely foolish like Natalie. David isn't incompetent, nor is he unwilling. He simply cannot touch the big piece of the Lou family's pie. He's 10 years younger than his brother, Alex who has already gained the full approval of the Liu family's board of directors. David couldn't possibly compete with Alex, and any attempt might lead to a fraternal rivalry that could destabilize the entire family. So from the moment David came of age, his father set annual targets for him, partly to develop his personal abilities and partly to help him accumulate some capital. In case Alex inherits the family business, David won't be left without options. David is smart enough to create an image of a useless playboy to avoid making his brother wary of him. I said, all right. Drop the act. Over the years, how much have you made? I bet even your dad doesn't know. Heh <laughs> heh heh. It's all thanks to you, Master Jonathan, guiding me. David said thick-skinned. I'm going abroad. I need to take control of my family's assets there as soon as possible. I said this as I down my drink. While I'm out of the country, you must keep me updated on the domestic market trends and the movements of those other families. I don't trust anyone else. David grew serious as well. Got it. Chapter 10. My thoughts returned to the present as I looked down at her. Clinging to my pant leg, refusing to let go, I called Mr. Lin directly, but he refused to come. In the end, he sent Ryu instead. Ryu slapped her twice across the face, and only then did Natalie, with a look of fear, follow him out. Before leaving, Ryu shot me a vicious glare, warning me not to seduce his wife. I was left speechless. After Natalie left, I immediately called David. These past few years, with me being abroad, I had too many things to deal with and worry about so I hadn't paid any attention to Natalie. Hey, Johnny, what's up? What's going on with Natalie now? Natalie, David was taken aback when he heard the name. She came to see you. Yeah, I tugged at my tie in frustration and sighed. She was holding onto my pant leg, saying she was giving me another chance. Ha ha ha. I could hear David's boisterous laughter through the phone. Jonathan, I can't believe you're dealing with this. Shut up. Okay, okay, I'll stop laughing. I'll send you her details right away. Within a couple of minutes, I received the information David had on Natalie from the past few years. Initially, after breaking off our engagement, Natalie caused a huge scene at the Lin family, forcing them to sever ties with her completely. After that, she went ahead and married Ryu. At first, Natalie didn't mind. She sold off her luxury items, jewelry, handbags, which was more than enough for her and Ryu to live on. Ryu sweet-talked her into buying him a small apartment, and she even brought his mother from the countryside to live with them. But Natalie had always been extravagant 
and Ryu and his mother were shamelessly leeching off her. Neither of them worked, and in less than six months, Natalie had sold off everything she could. By then, Natalie was heavily pregnant and had no choice but to turn to the Lin family for help. The Lin family had been searching far and wide for their real daughter, and when Natalie found out, she made a thoughtless remark, saying that their daughter was probably dead somewhere and that they should just take her back in instead. At least she could take care of Mr. and Mrs. Lin in their old age. This almost sent Mrs. Lin, who was desperate to find her daughter, back to the hospital. So, Natalie was left empty-handed and was thrown out by the Lin family. As for her loving brother Ryu, once he realized that the Lin family had completely abandoned Natalie, his attitude toward her changed entirely. When Natalie returned home, Ryu and his mother initially greeted her with smiles, but when they saw that she hadn't brought back any money, their faces immediately turned cold. Natalie, oblivious, tried to cry on Ryu's shoulder about the Lin family's heartlessness, but Ryu pushed her away and went straight to his room. Ryu's mother also made a sarcastic remark. Oh dear, so you don't even have a family to go back to, you're just an orphan now. From that day on, Ryu's mother started ordering Natalie around to do housework. But Natalie, being the spoiled princess she was, couldn't stand it and ended up having a huge fight with Ryu's mother. When Ryu came back and saw Natalie arguing with his mother, he didn't ask any questions, he just slapped her twice across the face. Who gave you the right to talk back to my mom? How dare you hit me? Natalie was in shock and tried to slap Ryu back in her fury. But as a pregnant woman, she was no match for Ryu. He grabbed her hand and slapped her twice more. I'll hit you again. I thought I had married into a wealthy family. But it turns out you're just a fake. You couldn't even bring in a single cent. So what are you still so proud of? My mom asking you to do housework is a sign of respect. How dare you disobey her? I'll beat you to death. Chapter 11. Natalie ran away from home. How ironic. She looked down on us commoners for the sake of her so-called love. Yet because she failed to bring back any money, she was repeatedly abused by the husband she adored. First, she returned to the Lin family, apologizing and begging for forgiveness, hoping to be accepted back but she didn't even make it through the front door. She was chased away immediately. Next, she, with her pregnant belly, sought out her former girlfriends, hoping they would take her in for a while. However, during their time together, Natalie had always acted superior, leveraging her status as a member of the Lin family. Though they called themselves sisters, she treated them like mere followers, so no one was willing to help her. Those with better manners made up excuses to refuse her, while the less tactful ones directly ridiculed her with cutting remarks almost causing Natalie to go into early labor out of anger. The most cunning one pretended to feel sorry for her, coaxed Natalie into pouring out her grievances while wiping away tears, then turned around and spread her story, exaggerated and full of mockery. Natalie was completely humiliated and had no face left to seek help from anyone in their circle. I heard she tried to find me, but by that time, I was already abroad. So she ended up with nothing. After wandering around for several days, with nowhere else to go, Natalie had no choice but to return home. What greeted her, of course, was another round of beatings. From then on, the Lin family's little princess seemed to have her pride broken. Under Ryu and his mother's abuse, she began to learn how to serve others. She often ended up with bruises and a swollen face, but outwardly, she still tried to save face, pretending that Ryu was good to her. It wasn't until she was about to give birth that Ryu and his mother started treating her a little better. This belly is so big, it must be a big grandson, Ryu's mother would say every day. But Natalie's first child turned out to be a girl. I didn't need to see the details to know what happened next. Because she didn't produce a son. Ryu and his mother treated Natalie even worse. They made her start working before she had even finished her postpartum recovery. Natalie tried to run away twice more. But she had no survival skills. Once, she managed to get a job as a cashier at a supermarket. But after only a few days, Ryu dragged her back home by her hair. Soon, she had a second child. Another daughter. The two daughters not only nearly broke Natalie but they also completely drained Ryu and his mother's patience for her. At one point, Ryu even broke her ribs. I closed the file. I thought to myself, is this Natalie's so-called love? How utterly laughable. Chapter 12. I picked up my phone and dialed a number. Hey, honey, are you home yet? I'm home. A clear, gentle voice answered on the other end of the line. How do you feel? I asked, still concerned. All good, don't worry. Feeling a bit more at ease, I said. Okay. Make sure to let your parents know that I'll visit in a few days to discuss our wedding. All right, got it. I hung up the phone, a smile playing on my lips. Three years have passed, and I, Jonathan, am finally about to step into the so-called grave of marriage. I thought I wouldn't see Natalie again, but three days later, at a Lin family banquet, she somehow sneaked in. She was dressed like a middle-aged housewife, standing out awkwardly among the guests at such an event. At the time, 
I was discussing future investment directions with David. Miss, may I see your invitation? You cannot enter the banquet hall without one. We suddenly heard a waiter questioning her. So we turned around out of curiosity. We saw a group of waiters surrounding Natalie, trying to escort her out. I'm Miss Lynn. She shouted at the top of her lungs. I'm here to see Jonathan. All eyes in the room immediately turned toward me. Natalie spotted me as well and hurriedly tried to rush over. Jonathan. Jonathan. I came to see you. The waiters held her back and looked at me. With a sigh, I nodded. And they finally let Natalie come over. She rushed up to me, trying to embrace me. But I quickly stepped aside. What are you here for this time? I asked. Genuinely curious about why she was so persistent in finding me. Stop pretending. Jonathan. I know you can't forget me. That you still love me. These past few years. You've ignored me, which was really too much, but if you apologize and show a better attitude, I might be willing to forgive you. She smoothed her hair. I'm willing to give up the first two worthless girls I had, but this baby should be a boy. You'll have to take care of him as if he were your own son. And I've had enough of having children. This will be my last one. And after this, I'm getting my tubes tied. Don't expect me to have any more for you. After we get married, you'll need to give me shares in the Lou Corporation as compensation. And lastly, she added, gritting her teeth. You need to get rid of Ryu and his mother, or I won't marry you. Chapter 13 She went on with her monologue, not giving me a chance to speak. When she finally finished, I said with exasperation, Natalie, what makes you think I would ever marry you? Do you even realize what you look like right now? You've already had two kids, and you're carrying another one. What? Do you think I'm some kind of fool who enjoys being humiliated? And why should the Lu family risk extinction for you? Has Ryu eaten away at your brain? I was still trying to be somewhat polite with her, but she remained stubborn. Stop pretending, Jonathan. Her voice was sharp, laced with fear. I've heard everything. You're planning to marry into the Lin family. You're going to marry their daughter. Sophia told me everything. Sophia was the friend who had betrayed her before. That's right. Jonathan is going to marry my daughter from the Lin family. Mr. Lin's voice suddenly rang out, and everyone turned to see him and Mrs. Lin slowly descending the stairs, each holding one arm of a young woman. The young woman had a graceful figure and delicate features, wearing a simple yet elegant designer dress that made her look even more refined. Jonathan is marrying my biological daughter, Isabel Lynn. Natalie looked at the three of them in disbelief, watching as her former parents carefully held another girl close. Isabel walked slowly up to me and took my arm. I looked at Natalie and asked, Do you understand now? No. No way. I am the Lynn family's daughter. Natalie suddenly broke down, holding her head and screaming, Dad. Mom. I'm your daughter. We've lived together for so many years. Mr. Lin snorted angrily. If it weren't for your real father swapping you with Isabel, we wouldn't have been separated from our own daughter for so many years, and you still have the nerve to show up here. Natalie, in a fit of madness, tried to attack Isabel. I frowned and, disregarding the fact that she was pregnant, pushed her away. She stumbled but fortunately didn't fall. I sighed in relief. The security guards who had rushed in quickly grabbed her. She looked at me in despair. Jonathan. Do you really not care about all the years we've known each other? Can't you help me just this once? Even if you only pretend to marry me, I can't survive anymore. She screamed at me, but I felt no sympathy. Natalie, from childhood until now, I've done more than enough for you behind the scenes. I, Jonathan, can say with a clear conscience that I've fulfilled my duty to you. You chose to break off the engagement yourself. You never considered how your actions would hurt the Lin family or me. You were stubborn and ignored all our warnings. So you deserve to pay for your choices. My voice was calm, without the slightest hint of emotion. Natalie finally realized the truth. Jonathan, you never loved me, did you? Correct. I answered without hesitation. Chapter 14 Natalie was dragged out by security, and although everyone had been thoroughly entertained by the drama, the party resumed as planned. Mr. Lin, full of pride, stood on the stage and addressed everyone. Everyone, the purpose of this banquet hosted by the Lin family is to announce that I, Pablo Lin, have finally found my daughter, Isabel Lin my youngest daughter, is formally introduced to you all today. The woman beside him gave a slight bow and said, Hello, everyone, I'm Isabel, and I'm very happy to be back with my parents. I'm also glad that you can witness our reunion. I've just returned, so there's still much I need to learn, and I hope you'll all be patient with me in the future. The audience erupted in applause. David leaned over and whispered, Wow, she doesn't look like someone who's just been reunited with her family. She's a perfect lady. Natalie can't even compare. How did you manage to win her over? Johnny. I shot him a smug look. I met Isabel at my overseas company. She had just graduated with a PhD from a top university abroad and had been hired by our HR department at a high salary to serve as the company's CEO. The first time I saw her, she seemed familiar, but I didn't think much of it. As we worked together, 
I gradually became attracted to her outstanding personal abilities and her bold yet cautious approach to business. After we started dating, I learned that she was actually an orphan, abandoned at the door of a welfare home as a child, later adopted by a single woman. Her adoptive mother was also an independent and accomplished woman. She raised Isabel and, after she grew up, took her abroad, where they started traveling the world. To this day, her mother is still out there enjoying life, who knows where. Given Isabel's resemblance to Mrs. Lynn, I began to suspect something and had David discreetly obtained some of Mr. and Mrs. Lynn's DNA samples for me. At the time, David thought I was planning something sinister and spent half a day trying to talk me out of it, saying that karma would come for me if I went through with it. When it was confirmed that Isabel was indeed the Lynn family's daughter, I didn't rush to reunite them. I first spent over a year building a relationship with Isabel before bringing her back home during this trip. After all, who doesn't have a few personal considerations? Hey, as I looked at Isabel on stage, I couldn't help but feel proud. She was first the top executive at the Liu family's company, then my beloved girlfriend, and only lastly the Lin family's daughter. The order of these roles was crucial for the harmony of our future marriage. Oh man, my girlfriend is gorgeous. Chapter 15. Natalie went mad. She killed Ryu, because her third child turned out to be yet another daughter. When Ryu found out, he decided she should start selling herself, cursing her furiously. You're a worthless woman who can't even produce a son. What else are you good for besides selling yourself? I bet no one would even want you. After giving birth to three useless girls, you're ruined. Damn it. Your only selling point now is that you used to be a Lin family member. That very night, Natalie took a kitchen knife and hacked Ryu to death. The next morning, when Ryu's mother opened the door, she found Natalie sitting in a pool of blood, looking up at her with a smile. Ryu's mother screamed, and Natalie even tried to kill her too. Fortunately, Ryu's mother didn't faint and managed to escape. When the police arrested Natalie, they found that she had completely lost her mind. No matter what they asked, she wouldn't speak. She just kept laughing in a chilling way. They even called me, along with Mr. and Mrs. Lin, to try to get her to talk. It was no use. She no longer recognized anyone. Having had three children in three years, and with her body worn down by constant abuse and torment, she was already on the brink of collapse. The police didn't dare keep her in a regular prison. In the end, Mr. and Mrs. Lin paid to have her sent to the best psychiatric hospital in Yen City. Mr. Lin's anger finally subsided, and he even started to feel a bit of regret. Sigh. Mr. Lin lamented. Maybe I was too harsh. Natalie's three daughters were thrown out by Ryu's mother and sent to an orphanage. The eldest child wasn't even three years old yet. These girls were the most innocent and pitiable ones in all of this. Isabel and I discussed it and decided to anonymously sponsor the orphanage, with a focus on these three girls to at least ensure they were well cared for. Chapter 16. A year and a half later, Isabel and I got married. After our wedding, we had a daughter. Not long after she was born, my parents practically snatched her from us, holding her so tightly they wouldn't let go. They didn't even want to give her back to us, and even the nanny we hired to help with the baby was taken away by them. The Lin family also gave up on the idea of taking a child to carry on the Lin family name. After everything they had been through, Mr. and Mrs. Lin became more open-minded and just wanted to make up for lost time with Isabel. Isabel asked me if I wanted another child, and I thought about it for a moment before declining. Having a baby is too hard on you. I gently touched her stomach, where the marks of childbirth still lingered, and it pained me every time I saw them. I'm already the luckiest mother, Isabel said. You gave me the best pre- and postnatal care. Most mothers have a much harder time, I mused. Do you think we could create a project that offers integrated care for women before and after childbirth, provide safe and scientific services? Isabel playfully tapped my head. All you think about is investments and projects. We can discuss that later. But if we really don't have more children, what will happen to the Liu family legacy? I looked at her in surprise. What do you mean? We have a daughter, don't we? Isabel suddenly burst into laughter, and it took her a while to stop. What's so funny? I asked, puzzled. Nothing, she replied, still chuckling. Epilogue. Hey, honey, David asked me to go out for a drink, is that okay? He's still single, but you're married now, and he's always asking you to go out. I'm starting to get jealous, oh, come on, he's almost 30 and still single, serves him right, he's always acting so carefree, what girl would like that? You know, I think he might be going through something, lately, he's been drinking alone a lot and keeps asking me how I managed to win you over, really, then go ahead, and make sure to bring back the gossip. Will do, honey, one kiss. Mwah.